Hey, dragonflies. It's time for a lesson with Mr. Madsen. Today we're going to start a new lesson. It's They are called second step lessons. And today specifically, we're going to talk about our feelings. So let's get started. So these pictures might look familiar. You've seen them if you've been at, at Duncan for a while. These are ones that I show just to demonstrate um, our basic feelings. And this first one, maybe you can take a guess. If you guessed happy, you're right. She is happy. She's smiling and she's looking straight up and out. She's happy. How about this next one? If you guess sad, you are correct. He's frowning and he's looking down. He's sad. How about this one? Yeah, if you guessed mad, you're correct. Look at his hands. He's made fists. Look at his face. It's a grumpy face. I don't know what's happened. He's either at a playground or at, at the recess playground at school or at a park or in his backyard. <clears throat> but something has happened that has caused him to be super mad. How about this one? If you remember, look at the window. Yeah, there's a storm coming and, and Andy is afraid of the rain and the lightning and the thunder. Wow, whatever she got in that little box has surprised her, wouldn't you say? She is totally surprised. This last one is kind of hard to see. If you look close, she's pulling something out of her shoe. So she went out to the recess playground and somebody had spit their gum out on the ground and she stepped on it. And when she stepped on it, it stuck to her shoe. So now she's prying it out with her fingers and she's making a Mr. Yuck face. I call it that anyway, but she's disgusted. This is disgust. Yeah, it's just, eh, it's just sick. So have you ever thought about our feelings being kind of like the weather, like a sunny day, usually, like today is a sunny day, usually we feel pretty happy when it's sunny. And a cloudy, rainy day makes us think about being sad. If there's lightning or thunder, that could be angry. Or big dark clouds could mean scared just like in Andy in the previous picture. Worried. Now this picture is of snow. So I would say adults might get worried when it's snowing because they might think, how am I going to get to work or how am I going to get to the store in my car if there's snow on the ground or ice. But kids, when they see snow like this, they're usually happy. Yeah. So... Maybe that picture doesn't line up for worried for kids, but for adults, it might. Now they have a picture of the wind blowing for embarrassed. And you know, embarrassed is one of those feelings that none of us likes to feel. It's when someone laughs at us or makes fun of us. It makes you feel really small and you just want to disappear. But that's embarrassed. You want to blow, you want to be so small that you could blow away with the wind shocked that's kind of like rain lightning thunder big storm you're just surprised and shocked and the last one confused it's kind of like a tornado or a hurricane you're spinning around and you don't know where you're gonna land or what's gonna happen next now I'm gonna show you a video about our feelings and they've got a good example of how our feelings match the weather. Take a look. Today we're going to learn about emotions, feelings, and moods. We're going to learn where they come from, what they look like, and what to do when you have them. Have any of you ever had a feeling? Mad. Sad. Happy. Wow. You guys already know a lot of feelings. Are there any others? Frustrated. Bored. Excited. Anxious. Tired. Proud. You can 
have different feelings throughout the day because they change, just like the weather changes. It can be sunny in the morning, windy in the afternoon, and rainy at night. Will I always notice that I'm feeling something? No, Jack, sometimes we don't even notice our feelings. Like it's a sunny day and you don't even notice the weather. So, this is what we already know. We all have feelings, all the time, even when we don't know we're having feelings. Feelings are part of us, just like the weather's part of the world. And they can change, just like the weather changes. Okay, big question. Is it okay to have feelings? Uh, maybe. Is it okay to be a sunny day? Yes. Well, of course it is. And if feelings for us are like the weather for the world, is it okay to have feelings? Yes. Is it okay to have strong or stormy feelings? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Is it okay to have strong weather, like a super stormy day? Yes. And if feelings for us are just like the weather for the world, is it okay to have strong feelings? Yes. Exactly. We all have strong feelings. Feelings are simply how we respond to things that happen to us. Does anyone actually know where we have feelings? Here? Here. Here? Here. Here. Here! Well, you're all a little correct. That's why feelings are so hard to figure out. They sort of happen in your head, but kind of everywhere else, too. So, if feelings are everywhere, let's see what feelings look like. If feelings are everywhere, what do they look like? Yeah, what do they look like? I'm confused. Well, Vivian, you look confused. Your face is what feeling confused looks like. Oh, now you look happy to me. Oh, now you look mad. them on your faces. Other people can understand what you're feeling just by looking at your face. You mean like this? He's sad. He's happy. And this? He's bored. You guys are reading faces, just like reading your ABCs. Okay, dragonflies. So we just saw that movie about feelings. And now I want to talk about our brains and how they connect to our feelings. So you remember this poster. Maybe your teacher has it in their background when they're teaching. But if you were at Duncan last year in your classroom, this poster would have been up. And there are three parts of our brain that we're going to focus on today, okay? The first part is our prefrontal cortex, and that is the learning part of our brain. It helps us to solve problems, it helps us to pay attention, and it helps us to make good choices. Again, it's the learning part of our brain. The next part I want to talk about is the amygdala. And the amygdala, think of a security guard, okay? And a security guard's job is to keep you safe. And that's what the amygdala does. It tries to perceive if there's a danger up ahead. And if it does, it might tell you to do one of these five responses. The first is fight, which means protect yourself. The second is flight, which means get out of there, just take off. The third is freeze, and that's a response where you you become like frozen, like a statue. Think of maybe if you've seen a deer on the side of the road, and if they look at headlights, they, there's a phrase they say, deer in the headlights, and they just freeze because they're so scared, okay? Fainting. Fainting is kind of like uh, sleeping, okay? But 
it happens instantly. So wherever you are, you would just fall down, which probably isn't the best thing because who knows what you would hit on your way down. And it's hard to wake up, okay? And the last one is flinch. So we have fight, flight, freeze, faint, and flinch. And flinch is more of an alert to danger. So let's say someone slams the door that's in this room that I'm in. I would go, what was that? So that would be flinching. So it's like alerting you to where danger might be. Again, the amygdala is our security guard and its job is to try to keep us safe. It doesn't necessarily help us make good decisions though in a moment because it perceives a lot of dangers as dangerous, but really they just are uncomfortable or we could solve them if we let our prefrontal cortex take over. But the problem with the amygdala is it tries to take over and tell the prefrontal cortex what to do. We'll talk more about that in a moment. The last part of the brain that we're gonna focus on is called the hippocampus. No, it's not an animal that lives in the jungle. The hippocampus is an important part of our brain. It helps us remember everything. It's the library, it saves everything. It saves our habits, our good memories, our bad memories as well. But it's where we store things like Kelso's wheel. Where Kelso's wheel, we have those nine choices to solve small problems, remember? And that's, that's how our prefrontal cortex can solve the problem because it remembers in the hippocampus. If the amygdala tries to take over, that gets unplugged. The prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus get unplugged and you go into survival mode. And that's not always the best. So we're gonna talk about how to get out of that survival mode so that you can get back into being able to solve problems with your prefrontal cortex. <clears throat> so in order to solve problems with our prefrontal cortex, we have to have ways to calm down when our amygdala is activated. So some of these you might remember, you can, and they all involve breathing, okay? And the first is belly breathing. You breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. When you breathe in through your nose, you fill up your belly and you can even put your hand on your belly to feel it rise. You wanna hold for at least three seconds, but maybe five or 10 seconds if you're really used to holding your breath and then let it out slowly through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose, hold and then out. And that's called belly breathing. Another one are balloon breaths. And this would be where you'd use your arms and stretch your body up when you fill up your lungs like a balloon being filled. And when you let the air out, the balloon gets smaller. And that's, a, that's another way to kind of also move your body and help your body be able to relax. Because when we get in survival mode with our amygdala, our muscles tense, and this would be a way to calm those muscles down. Another one are faucet breaths. And these are ones that we would do in class and you'd hold your hands out in front of you. It's hard for me to do um, in this way, but you'd hold your hands out and when you'd fill up your, your lungs with air, you'd close your fist like, and you'd hold. And then when you let the air out, it's like water coming out of a faucet. Those are faucet breaths. And also one of my favorites, hot cocoa. So remember, the cocoa is too hot to drink, so you smell the cocoa, hold your breath, and then gently blow out. We don't want to blow the marshmallow out of the cup, okay? But that's another way to help yourself calm down. The last one is a lot like balloon breaths. They're called volcano breaths. You put your hands in the middle of your chest, and when you breathe in, the lava goes up. And then when you breathe out, it goes out. And then you bring your hands back together. This is a nice one as well to get your body involved to calm those muscles down as well. So those are five ways, five ways to calm yourself down when your amygdala gets activated and your security guard wants to take over. Okay, I, I mentioned this before, but just a quick reminder. Remember, Kelso gave us nine ways to solve 
small problems. But if you have a big problem, we always go and find an adult we trust to solve those big problems, okay? Even adults, when they face big problems, they need other adults to come in and help them solve that problem. Big problems are big, they're scary, and they're dangerous, and you need help to solve them. But small problems, they're just annoying, and they bother us, and they bug us, and so those are problems that we can solve on our own, okay, and using Kelso's choices. <clears throat> Quick little quiz, okay, and this is going to be interesting because I don't have a way to know if you get them right. So we're just going to go through them and we'll have fun with it. So the first one, is this a small problem or a big one? Someone is running into the street. Think about it. They're running out into the street. Yeah, if you guess big, you're right. Yeah, that's dangerous. That's not okay. It's never okay to run out into the street. So that would be a big problem. Someone's picking up rocks and sticks and bark chips and they're throwing them. Think about that. They're throwing rocks and sticks and bark chips. Now you might be thinking, well, that feels like a small problem because I could just dodge or run away, right? Yeah, but what if you didn't dodge it quick enough and it hits you in the head or the eye? Yeah, that's a big problem. If you, if you guess that, you're absolutely right. How about this one? This is a tough one. Somebody calls you a name, a hurtful name. That feels big, it feels really big. Someone calls you a name. It makes your security guard kind of get up and, and want to fight maybe if they call you a name. But is it scary? No. Is it dangerous for someone to call you a name? No. It's just annoying and hurtful. So Kelso would say, yep, you guessed it, that's a small problem. Now it's not okay for people to call you names. So do your best to ignore them, ask them to stop, and walk away. But if it continues, find an adult you trust to get help with this problem, okay? Here's another one that happens at school a lot. You're standing in line, getting ready to go somewhere, let's say to PE and someone takes cuts in front of you because they want to stand by their best friend. Well, that feels like a big problem. They're cutting in front of you. And who cares where you stand in line, right? Well, exactly. It's not scary and it's not dangerous. It's just annoying. So Kelso would say that is a small problem. Yeah, if you got those four right, give yourself an applause. All right, nice job. We got four more. Uh oh, you come around the corner and you see someone playing with matches, with fire. Yeah, that's an easy one. That's a big problem, right? Yeah. How about someone is making noises when you're trying to do your classwork? Say you're at the table and you're trying to do your work and somebody's tapping on the table or snapping their fingers or they're singing or they want to watch TV and you're trying to do your work. It's annoying, right? But is it scary? Is it dangerous? No. So Kelso would say that's small, okay? And there's lots of ways to try to solve that problem. Another one, you say you're at the park or at school, when we come back to school, and you're when somebody is saving a swing for a friend, and you really want to swing, and it's the last one. Hmm, is it scary? No. Is it dangerous? So that would be a small problem, right? It feels big, but it's really a small problem. And the last one, you're playing a board game and somebody's cheating. That drives me nuts when somebody's cheating. It really bugs me. But is it scary? No. Is it dangerous? No. So it's a small problem. If you got those all right, give yourself a pat on the back. Nice job. Okay. Let's move on. So now I have a movie about a boy and his family going on a hike. Let's watch the movie, then we'll talk about it.
There are several ways to tell how a person is feeling. You can look at their face and body. You can listen to what they are saying and how they say it. You can also look at what is happening and think about how you might feel in a similar situation. How do you think Daniel is feeling? What do you think he should do? Does Daniel feel the same now as he did when he was lost? Do his mom and dad feel the same now as they did when they were searching for Daniel? Daniel? Sometimes, a person's feeling about a particular situation can change. Chasing after my airplane, man, I didn't know where I was. Yeah, he did the right thing, though. He stayed right where he was and yelled for help. I'm glad Dad found you. Let's all stick together, okay? All righty. Okay, so this was a movie about a family going on a hike. What happened to the boy? What was he doing? If you're thinking, he was playing with his airplane while everyone was walking down the trail and his airplane took him on another trail and that's how he got lost. You're absolutely right. He wasn't paying attention and he went down a different trail and he totally got lost. And then he didn't know where his family was. Fortunately, his family realized, hey, he's not with us. And they were able to figure out how to find him. His dad left his brother and his mom and their dog and said, I'll find him. And he went back and was able to find him. Fortunately, he did the right thing though, right? He didn't wander farther thinking he knew the way. When he realized he was lost, he stopped and he yelled, which is the best tool we have when we're lost, is to yell because that will draw attention to us, okay? And someone will be able to find us. If we still wander around and think we know the way, that's a good way to get lost even worse. So he did the right thing in being able to get help. But it was scary, right? He was all by himself. All of a sudden, he was really happy playing, walking down the trail with his plane, but then he got scared because he got lost. But he, he remembered what to do and that's because it was in his hippocampus, remember, the library? And he knew, okay, I know what to do if I get lost, and he did it. This is the last one we're gonna look at, and I don't know if you remember, but I call these detective cards. So we're gonna look at the picture for a second and try to determine what is going on here. Okay, we got two friends. This is Dwayne and Marcus, and Dwayne wants to play a game, and I don't know if you can tell what that is, but it's a game called Battleship. And it was really popular when I was a kid. Each person held their own board, they put their ships where they wanted, and then you would say, 
A10 or B7 and they would say hit or miss if you hit one of their boats or you missed it and you put a peg in to mark it and it was a strategy game to try to figure out where people's ships were okay so Dwayne really wants to play battleship but what did Marcus build can you tell yeah it's a fort forts are so fun especially on a rainy day when you can't go outside yeah and he really wants to play in the fort so there's a problem both boys want to play but they want to play different things this might happen to you sometimes when you're with a friend and you both want to play different things think about how could you solve this problem is this a big problem or a small problem let's ask ourselves is this scary no is it dangerous mm, no looks like it's safe so it's not a big problem it's a small problem right all right well let's think about kelso's wheel they could talk it out right they could share and take turns maybe they could do both right they could play in the fort and play battleship at the same time or be in separate spots and play that game right yeah they could share and take turns or they could um, make a deal which is we'll play in the fort for a little bit then we'll play battleship or vice versa so either one of those would solve this problem for these boys all right dragonflies i just want to remind you before i send you off that whenever your amygdala gets activated your security guard you need to remember to breathe that's the only way to calm it down so that you can use your prefrontal cortex to solve the problem in front of you and this picture of this dandelion is kind of a nice idea you breathe in and hold and then when you blow out picture that you're holding a dandelion and as you blow those seeds fly out into the wind and picture those seeds as your feelings of anger or your scared feelings or your nervous or worried feelings floating away so that you can calm down and be able to think, what do I need to do? All right, so here's your instructions. I want you to um, do the flip grid activity after watching this video and I'll see you next time. Take care.